particular lecture, we will talk about the worms applications. If you will see that uh, nowadays we are using wide monitoring based uh, system for different applications like uh, for the generation sector, for the transmission sector, for the distribution sector. And if you will see this particular uh, slide where I have just uh, mentioned uh, about the different uh, sectors like if we will take a uh, generation here we can go for generator operation status and monitoring. Let us say in particular generating station we have large number of like generating uh, power plants I mean more number of generating power plants and we have to monitor the corresponding voltage frequency and the, the current output power output. So, there are many parameters which are uh, basically the require monitoring system what is their status. So, for that purpose of course, we can use the worms application like wider monitoring system. The second one is the transient angle stability. In case of uh, generating stations, we have uh, like different uh, stability issues, voltage stability, then we have angle stability, we have uh, uh, frequency stability. So, keeping on that mind, different type of uh, stability issues can also be monitored using this worms structure. Now, coming to the transmission part uh, like uh, uh, state estimation, load flow, optimal power flow load forecast and economical dispatch. So, these are uh, different uh, operating parts, operational parts of the transmission system, then how to basically help the load flow, the conventional load flow, conventional test state estimation process. So, there also we can embed the information from the worms technology and we can improve it to a higher version, where this uh, thing will be more realistic and more accurate and more reliable for further process. And uh, this one is also very important like load forecast. If you can uh, forecast uh, the load uh, pre hand like uh, what is happening, how much power we have in our hand uh, next uh, one week or two days or one day ahead, uh, then in that case uh, we easily we can go for the power dispatch, how much power we can uh, supply to that particular customers or to that particular area that can also we can decide easily. And also we can do the economic economic dispatch part. Coming to the distribution part, we have like uh, substation automation, feeder automation and the customer side automation. And this is uh, in fact, the distribution part is the customer end, where uh, the utilization of the power takes place. And uh, obviously, the more uh, interaction uh, is uh, going to be at the customer side and that is why this uh, smart grid uh, aim is to improvise or to make the distribution system more smart in nature. And lot of applications are lying down where there is a great scope if we can apply this worms technology for the distribution side. And it is already tested for the transmission side where we are just placing the PMUs uh, for just transferring the data to the PDC that is the uh, we have already discussed the data concentration centers and then it is going to the national PDC, national level data concentration centers and there from there we can take any decision we like. But uh, in the distribution side also we have to take care and the same technology can be applied for uh, accurate and reliable operation of the distribution system. Coming to the first part, the substation automation part, the first component is the service restoration. See, sometimes uh, what happens uh, after the fault inception, we have to reconnect the circuit to the main circuit or we have to basically bring back the service, the service should be restored so that the customers uh, will get supply after certain time period. So, those uh, type of service restoration techniques can also be improved using this worms technology. And the second one is the bus voltage control. At certain buses, uh, we could see that that the voltage profile is going down or the voltage is going to be collapsed due to the lack of uh, reactive power compensation or reactive power supply. So, those uh, remedical controls or remedies we can act from the worms technology. So, that is what uh, we can control this bus voltage and the line drop compensation 
also we have this automatic reclosing facility. So, this automatic reclosing facility also we can draw from this worms. And coming to the feeder automation part, uh, we could do this automatic feeder switching, then this uh, feeder voltage control and again also we have this facility active reactive powers control. So, this active reactive power control is very very important as far as the feeder automation is concerned where the load uh, changes time to time. The load is not static in nature, it is dynamic in nature. So, in that case obviously, the active reactive power is going to be changed, they are going to be changed. So, that is why this feeder automation part, this voltage control, active reactive power control are important. Customer side of automation, we have advanced metering infrastructure and automatic meter reading. So, these two are uh, already we have discussed in our uh, during our uh, substation automation part that what is this uh, advanced metering infrastructure. Uh, using this uh, infrastructure, we can monitor basically the major the power at the customer premises for further analysis. This is how this automatic meter reading also does. Now, I will just show some examples that uh, how this particular worms technology help to us. How this particular worms technology helps to us? The first one you will see the loss of synchronism. What is the meaning of loss of synchronism? That in a particular network we have uh, two, three generators and if the generator is going out of order due to certain problem or some fault or some maintenance so or some other difficulties. So, the, this, the generator is disconnected to the network. So, that condition is known as loss of synchronism. Now, that uh, by taking the voltage magnitude and phase angle information, we can always say that uh, what is the status of this generator, whether the generator is connected to the network or not. So, that is what uh, the technology, this worms technology will help to us. Now, we have also this uh, reactive power shortage. If any at particular bus, we do not have sufficient reactive power to supply to that particular uh, volt, I mean the bus to maintain the voltage profile. So, always we can uh, uh, send some control command from the control center to enhance the reactive power supply by switching on certain reactive compensation devices and that is uh, it is quite possible using this worms technology. And also we can always by this uh, corresponding as I said. Uh, uh, by looking the voltage profile of each bus, uh, we are just monitoring time to time uh, just in real time platform using this uh, worms technology, then always we can see the voltage profile whether it is going to collapse uh, at certain buses in the network. That is what this voltage collapse status. And also we have heavy loading practice. If in some areas we have excess uh, load uh, which are now connected and uh, this load is, is basically the load is drawing huge amount of power then that is known as heavy loading of the network. So, that uh, due to that we may have some oscillations you know that uh, basically in a power network when the load increases or decreases it means uh, the electrical power of the generator decreases or increases. But keeping in mind that at that condition our mechanical input to the generator remains constant. So, as you know that uh, if uh, the mechanical power remains constant and the electrical power varies, so obviously there will be a change in these two powers that is P A is equal to this P A is equal to P M minus P that is our accelerating power, mechanical power minus the electrical power. So, this excess this accelerating power accelerates the rotor of the machine. So, due to that we may have some oscillation in the current and voltage waveforms. This is what uh, it is shown here in the power finally, the power will also oscillate. So, those kind of uh, inter area oscillations between two areas or within a single area we could have some oscillations at different buses. So, those oscillations always we can tap from the wider monitoring system and we can take corresponding remedies or some control actions we can apply. Now, coming to this uh, transmission corridor congestion. So, if uh, we are supplying some I mean power so through the particular transmission line from one bus to other bus, so that there is a chance that that line that particular line may be overloaded. So, that may be some congestion I mean. So, in that case how to maintain it, how to divert the power unless until you know the status of the line. So, we cannot take any decision. 
So, that particular decision can be taken from the pumps technology. Now, we have uh, another factor that is cascading outages, we have frequency deviations, already we have discussed loss of generation. So, these are the focused areas where this worms technology can be uh, basically utilized or it, I can say in other word it can be like uh, uh, properly justified and we can uh, exploit this particular uh, technique for our betterment or better uh, operation of our network or smart grid system. This is one snapshot uh, that worms application for phase angle monitoring that you could see here that uh, there are two buses, uh, two buses so we have placed PMU 1 and this 2. So, for that particular one PMU the voltage uh, uh, magnitude is 239.63 and angle is 0 degree and this is the phasor position if you could see in this uh, wheel this circle. And here the second part the voltage here is the magnitude is 235.85 and the angle is minus 15.0 degree and here is the uh, phasor position. So, phasor means it has the phasor word itself indicates the V A if it is a phasor voltage then it has a voltage and also it has an angle phi that is what this voltage V A is 239.63 kV and the angle is 0 degree and here is this phasor position. And when this angle is minus 15 degrees, so this angle is basically minus 15 degree. So, this is how we can take the snapshots uh, from the wide area monitoring system technology and easily we can locate where is this particular phasor is lying. The we can see always the phasor position of particular bus of a particular power network. Now, if we we'll come to the worms application like uh, voltage stability monitoring. Here also we can see from the wide area monitoring system that if it is green it is a basically normal operation of the system that means the voltage is uh, in a stable condition. If it is like yellow it is a early warning condition. Now, if it is uh, red it is emergence alarm system. So, these are basically the symbols or colors we use to detect whether my system this uh, voltage is stable or it is in unstable mode. So, of course, if you, this is the condition, so we can take some control measures or control actions that is what is our target. First of all, we know what is the status, then we can take the corresponding actions. Now, the, this is what this uh, power oscillation monitoring part and uh, if some areas like between two areas the tie line basically connects two areas if any uh, oscillation occurs uh, within this tie line. So, we can monitor from this uh, uh, wide area monitoring system facility. So, from there we can take some decisions. These are some examples I said. So, there are a lot of many applications we can do from this uh, wide area monitoring system structure. Now, uh, already we have discussed when I started this uh, wide area monitoring system uh, lecture that uh, we have uh, discussed that the, there are three components of this wide area monitoring system. The first one is uh, the data acquisition, second one is the communication part and the third one is application. So, already we have seen application part as for the data concerned we have already discussed the synchronized measurement data that is the operational data and other part is non operational data those non operational data we can obtain from this one of the device this is the digital fault recorder it is known as F R D F R. So, what are the this is the basic block diagram for this we will acquire the signal we will acquire the signal and we have expert system and from the expert system we can store the data or we can process the data for further actions. So, it will just uh, this uh, digital fault recorder acts as a black box of a substation and it records highly accurate waveforms related to the faults. It will record it is basically records uh, the voltage uh, current waveforms during the fault inception period. So, it will just uh, say at what accurately at what point the fault was there the fault was incepted in a particular line or any particular device or transformer generator or you can say feeder or so any load so wherever. So, we can always record the voltage current data using this particular device. And this uh, the recorded data huge amount of analog and status data for pre fault, fault and post fault conditions can be also used for further analysis. 
that that particular device will help us. Now, we have another uh, device that is the digital protective relay, we will discuss more about in a subsequent classes when we will talk about, I uh, will just take about the uh, protection part of the smart grid system that uh, this digital protective relay also takes a very good decision and it will just try to protect uh, every equipment in fact the generator, generators, transformers, transmission line, feeders, loads. So, every equipment uh, basically protected by one digital relay and this relay uh, digital relay takes the voltage current information and it uh, basically operates with certain signal processing techniques and it gives the trip signal to the circuit breaker. And also we have third one that is a circuit breaker monitoring device. It will just uh, this particular device, this monitor this monitoring device will monitor the status of the circuit breaker which is present circuit breaker which is present inside the circuit. It may be in the transmission level or it may be distribution level. So, we can always extend even if suppose it is uh, related to the distribution level always we can extend this technology to uh, other level also. So, to facilitate the smart grid technology and also to have a better visualization of the circuit or network for understanding what is happening inside the circuit. So, that any disturbance any event is going to be going to be happened inside the circuit. So, we can take some major action uh, before going to have some cascading failure of the circuit or some blackouts or brownout. So, in that case uh, these devices uh, I mean data which are obtained from these devices are very very important. I will just come to the very important part of this uh, wide area monitoring system that is a phase measurement unit and uh, in fact, this PMU is the heart of our wide area monitoring system. So, without this PMU the wide area monitoring system has no meaning. So, this PMU stands for phase measurement unit and uh, basically as the name suggests that phaser it measures the phaser of the voltage and current. If let us say these are uh, two buses where uh, we have this V 1 is the voltage magnitude or phasor of bus 1 and this V 2 is the voltage phasor for bus 2. Now, how to know this phasor position of these two buses? As already we have discussed in the SCADA system the magnitude of the voltage of each bus basically is known to us, but not the phase angle. But nowadays uh, if we could see our uh, distribution system or even the transmission system or network or distribution network are becoming basically from passive to active network. Why? It is why? Because due to the integration of renewable sources like small hydro power plants and wind turbines or solar system. So, this network is becoming now from passive to active. So, now, the distribution system is also is having the facility to generate the power from, from any corner of it. That means, because we are connecting the solar and wind small hydro stations at uh, nearest to the our load terminals. So, we are generating the power. So, in that case uh, with magnitude information it is not sufficient to visualize to control the network or to protect the network of the smart grid system. So, it is necessary to have this uh, both the information like magnitude of the voltage and angle of the voltage or maybe the magnitude and angle of the current. So, that is what this PMU device helps to us uh, providing this magnitude and phase angle of the voltage and current. If this is basically the bus 1 phasor this blue one. So, this is my V 1 phasor position of the voltage and this red one is the phasor position of the V 2 that is our bus number 2. And we have a very good facility that with the advancement of this computer facilities and also signal processing techniques we could uh, like uh, we are able to estimate the phases of the voltage and current in real time platform. We use basically the DFT discrete Fourier transform for this and the inside the PMU the algorithm op, uh, runs and using that we can always estimate the phases of the voltage and current for further analysis. And that is how this uh, phases uh, uh, notation or phaser positions we can always uh, obtain using this PMU device which are basically installed inside the power network. Now, this is uh, one of the PMU connection snapshot where this uh, phase conduct this is our phase conductor or the power conductor 
and this is our potential transformer and this is our current transformer and uh, here is our PMU the phasor measurement unit PMU and uh, this uh, current transformer is connected uh, to the PMU terminal through this burden and uh, we have also this uh, instrument transformer which is also connected through this attenuator to the voltage terminal of this PMU device and we have always this uh, computer is connected to the interface to the PMU to analyze the data and uh, what are the voltage current phases or instantaneous values or even sometimes this PMU also if it is customized properly it can also record the frequency and the rate of change of the frequency. So, this computer basically records or it displays the voltage current data. Now, this is how this I uh, will discuss about the PMU scenario in India that uh, we have uh, different uh, uh, SRLD Siemens uh, southern part of this uh, load dispatch center and this is our eastern region, this is western, this is northeast and this is northern region. And we have total 5 uh, load dispatch centers and uh, at every load dispatch center we have PDC the phasor data concentrator uh, stations and from there the data uh, just passed to the our national load dispatch center that is we have a national uh, PDC. So, where we will just uh, receive all the PME data from all the national grids 5 national grids. And we have also PMU pilot projects are uh, upcoming and is also some PMUs are installed it is also in operation and uh, 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 government of India also planning for more uh, PMU installation in our uh, transmission network. And if you see this uh, PMU scenario in eastern region so these are some of uh, the data we have collected Rorkla, Jaipur and uh, Raigarh 2 the current feeder connected to PMU and Talcher 1 and uh, Durgapur. Ringali and these are some places Ranchi, Jamshedpur. So, we have the eastern region. So, these are the places where we have the PMU connection. Similarly, we have northeast region where the PMU connection also there and uh, this is for the northern region part. This is our Dadri, Kanpur, Agra. Uh, so, these are the places where we have PMUs at 400 kV bus system you could see here the bus voltage is 400 kV. And similarly for the southern region also at the 400 kV level we have installed the PMUs for our further processing and this is for the western region. If you could see that uh, more or less uh, India is also progressing towards this worms technology and in near future we will also extend this technology towards the distribution sector to the distribution part so that our whole network will be smart both transmission distribution together. Now, I will just come quickly the again to this PMU part uh, how it measures the synchronized uh, data the synchronized the synchronized phasor voltages and currents. Now, this is one location in the network this is location 2 that uh, these two locations are uh, apart from each other, but still at the control center the data the voltage V 1 from this location the phasor and V 2 the voltage data or voltage phasor will get from location 2 will be in same time stamp. So, for analyzing this two data we need these two voltages should be synchronized then only we can analyze otherwise it will be difficult to analyze these two phasors. So, that particular work is done in worms technology using the PMU device. Now, the angular difference between these two can be determined if the two local clocks are synchronized. See here also we have one local clock and here also we have one local clock. So, if these two clocks are synchronized together then, then only these two phasors can be compared together that is what the meaning of synchronized measurements. And this synchronization is synchronizing pulses, pulses are obtained from the GPS satellite. The GPS satellite will supply the synchronizing clocks or synchronizing pulses. So, with help of which these two data two phasors are going to be coordinated or going to be synchronized at a common time frame. And if we are just synchronize the time stamp if uh, we have like uh, the uh, angle of uh, 360 degree here it is. And, uh, 
our uh, sampling basically if it is 1 millisecond base. So, what is the angle between two corresponding samples? It will be 360 degree divided by 20 because we have 20 milliseconds within 50 hertz uh, one cycle signal. So, this 20 milliseconds. So, if we divide so within 1 millisecond, so it is going to be have 18 degree between two samples, two corresponding samples the angle difference is going to be 18 degree. And if you will just uh, correspond to 1 microseconds, how much it will be? So, it will be if uh, if you will just divide again 10 to the power this uh, 3. So, it will be 0 0.018 degree. So, the precision is better the resolution I mean if uh, suppose we have some error between two samples. So, if you will take uh, like uh, 1 microsecond uh, resolution. So, it will be much better here than this 18 degree difference. So, these are the uh, so concepts of synchrophasor angle measurement. So, this 1 pulse per second 1 pps corresponds to this t equal to 0 when this cosine function is having the peak value. This is what uh, the definition by the IEEE standard that how to standardize this synchro synchronized angle universally this angle should be synchronized. Then therefore, that we have some format we have some standard like we have to take one cosine function that is what here this phi this is if this is my signal this phi is an instantaneous phase angle relative to a cosine function this is our cosine function this is our cosine function at a nominal system frequency at a nominal system frequency that is our 50 hertz signal frequency synchronized to the universal time coordinate this is important. So, if I will get the pulse 1 pulse per second from the satellite from the GPS system. So, in that case, so if it is at t equal to 0 at the peak value, so then in that case my phi is equal to 0 because it starts from 0. And how to write this particular phasor? V max this I max or x max divided by root 2 angle of 0 degree x stands for either voltage or current it may be a voltage signal or it may be a current signal. Now, if uh, suppose there is also another part the, this angle is 0 when the maximum of x t occurs at UTC second rollover. Now, and minus 90 degree when the positive 0 crossing occurs if suppose let us say this particular uh, peak is uh, moved to the, this point that means, uh, what is the difference between the phase difference between these two points 90 degree. So, this is this point is lagging to this point by minus 90 degree it is lagging by 90 degree see here. So, this is our 90 degree that means, this is this point is lagging to this point by 90 degree. So, while we will express this particular instantaneous signal in phasor form. So, we will write this is the magnitude and this is the angle part minus 90 degree. So, we have just basically standardized this uh, using this PPS 1 pulse per second that should be the strategy for to synchronize the voltage current phasors at different buses in a particular smart grid system. This uh, UTC stands for basically the coordinated universal time that is the primary time standard by which the world regulates clocks and time and it is within 1 second means solar time at 0 longitude. So, this is important this using this UTC concept we can synchronize the basically we if we have different number of buses in a network. So, this V 1 phasor this V 2 phasor or V 3 phasor all together they can be synchronized globally. This is basically the basic block diagram of the PMU we have first uh, the analog inputs the analog inputs means the voltage current signals and this voltage current signals will pass to the NTLizing filters. We will discuss about this what is the function of this NTLizing filter. Then it will go to the ADC converter the data and here still this is analog this signal is analog here and even the signal status at the output of this analog I mean NTLizing filter is also analog in nature. Now, this analog signal this analog signal is going to be converted to digital platform using this ADC converter that is uh, analog to digital converter. And after that this will go to the phasor uh, microprocessor where the phasors are going to be 
calculated or estimated using the discrete Fourier transform technique. Now, after that it will go to the modems for communication purpose to the PDC, the phasor data concentrator and from the phasor data concentrator we can apply to other devices like relays or some circuit breaker wherever we like the to utilize the PMU data we can always apply. And this is how the other part uh, that is our this is our global positioning system that is GPS. Uh, we have uh, the global positioning uh, clocks uh, like uh, 24 satellites on 6 orbits at a height of 10898 miles and each satellite covers 42 percent of the globe. We have uh, 6 uh, uh, orbits and 24 satellites and this uh, satellites uh, uh, rotates around the earth and uh, it will just uh, this the GPS receiver will receive the signal from the satellite and it will just supply to the phase locked oscillator. So, this phase locked oscillator will generate or it will lock the sampling frequency according to the GCA GPS receiver signal. One pulse per second will be received by this uh, satellite, I mean this GPS receiver and it will send to this unit and from there this ADC will start sampling the voltage current signal and then it will send to the processor. This is what uh, the word sampling at 1 millisecond. Let us see, we will discuss about uh, the sampling part. If uh, we have a uh, voltage waveform, then uh, for relaying purpose, uh, for protection purpose, uh, the sampling rate is basically safe side we took uh, basically 1 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz. That sampling frequency we denote by Fs. This Fs is known as sampling, sampling frequency. Now, if the sampling frequency is 1 kilohertz and we have a 50 hertz uh, signal, let us a voltage signal. So, what is the time period for this particular signal? That is 20 milliseconds. How it is? 1 divided by 50 hertz because 1 of 1 frequency is our time, 1 period that is a Ts. So, this fundamental time period is 20 milliseconds, fundamental frequency is 50 hertz and for this particular signal we are taking 1 kilohertz as a sampling frequency. The meaning is we are sampling the analog signal at a rate of 1 kilohertz. So, after every millisecond, 1 millisecond we are getting the samples, the digitalized signal of the analog signal. If you could see this particular signal, we have uh, 1 kilohertz sampling frequency after every 1 millisecond we have samples. So, overall we have uh, 20 samples per cycle. If we can count here, so we will have 20 samples per cycle. So, we write like this 20 samples per cycle. So, within 1 cycle we will have 20 samples, uh, within 2 cycles we will have 40 samples and within 3 cycles 60 samples so on. Now, if we we'll just uh, take another sampling rate that is 0 0.02 by 8 means 8 samples per cycle and in that case uh, you can see here the signal is not approximated act to actually to our actual signal. The approximation is less here. You can see here it is better because we are just taking more number of sam samples within one cycle, but here the number of samples uh, decreased that is why the approximation of the exact signal is not possible. Now, if we increase the number of samples per cycle more like here we have taken 64 n, we denote capital N, N basically stands for number of number of samples, samples per cycle. So, if uh, we have increased here the uh, number of uh, samples per cycle to 64, so in that case uh, we have better resolution, better approximation to our original signal. That means, to have a better approximation or uh, exact if you want to extract or we want to convert the exact analog signal to digital that means, we have to increase the sampling frequency, but of course, however, we have some certain limitation for this. So, what should be the sampling frequency? So, that our signal should not be affected I mean the digitalized version of the analog signal should be proper for further processing through the microprocessor or DSP processor inside the PMU. During this uh, uh, sampling or uh, we have one impact that the effect that is 
aliasing effect. This aliasing effect means if uh, a fundamental basically we have some let us say 50 hertz signal, but uh, during the power system uh, operation we have like ha higher fundamental fre higher frequency components like uh, other harmonic frequency components, second harmonic or third harmonic or fourth or fifth harmonic components are present. So, those are our ha higher frequency components. In that case what happens due to this aliasing effect the higher frequency components will behave like a small signal low frequency component or fundamental frequency component. So, that effect is not desirable for LA or PMU operation. So, in that case we have to remove this effect using different concepts. So, if you just uh, if you take a fifth uh, harmonic component which is uh, merged with our fundamental frequency then in that case if I am sampling at uh, rate of 8 samples per uh, cycle. So, if you could see here these are the samples we have taken that is. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, here is our uh, cycle ends 0 0.02 second means 1 cycle. So, within 1 cycle we have 8 samples present. So, in that case uh, if I just uh, taking this 8 samples per second. So, this particular fifth harmonic component of the signal will behave as uh, just like I am the fundamental frequency component. So, please take me. So, in that sense the aliasing effect is severe here. So, we have to remove this. So, what we do for this case we basically uh, do this is one more example. I just want to also explain this waveform that uh, this particular waveform is having 660 hertz frequency component and if you are just sampling this particular waveform at a rate of 6000 hertz per second. So, we will get the signal like this here. So, this particular waveform will behave just like a 60 hertz component signal. This signal will behave just like a 60 hertz signal component that means, this high frequency component will behave like a small uh, frequency component or fundamental frequency component. So, this effect is known as aliasing effect. To overcome this particular problem we have anti aliasing filter. This anti aliasing filter uh, first we maintain one theorem that is uh, sampling theorem and uh, Shannon's theorem. What we have to do? We have to maintain the sampling frequency in such a manner that it should be greater than twice of the higher frequency component of the signal. Let us say we have certain high frequency component which is present in a particular signal. So, our sampling frequency should be 2 times of that particular signal. It should be greater than that or equal to that. So, in that sense we can overcome this aliasing effect that is what here this uh, sampling theorem tells. Now, also we maintain low frequency like uh, low pass filters where we will just remove the higher frequencies and we will just pass the low frequencies and also our fundamental frequency for our application purpose. Uh, basically in this case we use the RC filters and sometimes uh, we you can see that uh, some other low pass filters are also used. Now, this is one specific example where the RC filter is shown that this uh, these are the resistances values and these are the capacitance values and this is how this gain here present and this is how 360 is the cutoff frequency. So, there are a lot of uh, research is also uh, researchers are just trying to have this design of this RC filters for removing this uh, uh, higher frequency components when the signal is passing from, from one domain to analog domain to digital domain. And also next uh, we use the ADC in case of uh, PMUs and uh, we have different type of ADCs like uh, su successive approximation integrating flash or parallel. So, depending on their resolution speed and also noise immunity and cost. So, this is the table how this particular all different types of AD ADC vary in their operation. And this GPS already we have discussed uh, that GPS uh, transmits uh, basically two frequencies. The first one is 12 to 7.6 and uh, second one is 1575.2, so 4 to megahertz. So, these two frequencies are the transmitted frequency by the GPS technology. And uh, if you will see that there are these are arranged in 6 orbital planes and displayed from each other by 60 degree and having an inclination of 55 degree 
with respect to the equatorial plane. So, this there is some certain arrangement for this GPS so that we can cover uh, the whole network uh, nicely and properly and for our uh, operational point of view. Now, this uh, if you see this PMU uh, gets this uh, clock uh, this uh, something clock is phase locked with the GPS clock pulse. This is very very important this phase locked oscillator and the GPS clock together they are locked then only this ADC will start uh, converting I mean sampling this analog signal to digital domain it will just start sampling this analog signal to digital domain. Basically, uh, one question comes here that uh, what are the data or voltage information which are provided by this PMU. This PMU provides uh, positive sequence voltage and current also. Now, if we have inside the PMU we have discussed that we measure or we estimate this uh, voltage like V A, V B, V C phasers using the DFT the discrete Fourier transform technique. By using this uh, phases, so we can always calculate the positive sequence component of the voltage that is V A plus A V B plus A square V C. So, this uh, positive sequence component of the voltage can be estimated or calculated inside the processor of the PMU using the phases of corresponding voltage signals instantaneous voltage signals. And uh, it is also possible to measure the local frequency and rate of change on the frequency this is also important. First of all it provides V 1 I 1 first sequence voltage and current and second one it provides the frequency and also d f by d t the rate of change of frequency. And the third one is very very important if it can be customized. So, it can also measure or provide harmonics this is very important because nowadays uh, in smart grid system we have uh, many inverter based uh, generating stations we are it is coming up basically solar wind or we have uh, fuel cell or we have like uh, other uh, uh, devices where uh, we have electronic devices or electronic interfaces are present. So, in that case uh, there is a good chance of uh, harmonic injection to the network. So, for that uh, this uh, PMU can be customized properly to estimate the harmonic components of the voltage and current signal and also it can provide V 2 V 0 that is the negative and 0 sequence components of the voltage and also I 2 I 0 the negative and 0 sequence components of the current. So, these are the output uh, data or the out output information we got from the PMU. This is how this PMU transfers uh, the voltage current signal and this is the GPS uh, receiver time is synchronized at what time we want to start uh, the sampling of this particular signal and after the getting this sampled values of the voltage or current we will apply the DFT to estimate the phases and uh, we will get the, sim the symmetrical component transformation technique using that we will get positive sequence components and further also we can get negative and 0 sequence components and then also we can calculate the rate of change of frequency and further we can apply for the real time application or some disturbance or transient recurrence whatever the applications we want to do we can do using this data. This is how this uh, sequence components are calculated already we have discussed here and uh, this is the single phase reporting rate uh, this is for 50 hertz 10 samples per cycle 25 here 50 here and for 60 hertz the these are the figures this is IEEE standard basically. And this is the um, basically the file structure of synchrophage standard the header file the configuration file data file and command file. So, these are the files uh, which are present inside the PMU and those files I mean the data file are sent to the PDC. Uh, we have already discussed how this uh, data file are sent to the PDC for further uh, application that the PDC will basically uh, provide one uh, command that you send the data file then the PMU will just will be triggered and it will supply the data files to the uh, PDC and then the PDC will again send one stop file then the PMU will stop the data from the PMU to the PDC. 
these are the formats this is one PMU kit and in Indian context uh, within 4 to 5 lakhs also we can just purchase one PMU for our uh, network application. So, in this particular class we have uh, discussed about the wide remanenting system applications and then we just uh, started with uh, what are the application areas like to monitor the angle variation or stability issues or uh, angle oscillation also. And after that we just uh, discussed the PMU part, uh, the PMU is also important component of the wide remanenting system where we have discussed how this uh, data is basically synchronized and data are passing from one PMU station to other stations and uh, what is the uh, GPS uh, clock does and many other parts. Thank you all.